two different mindsets. In a fixed mindset, people believe their basic qualities, like their intelligence or talent, are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. They also believe that talent alone creates success, without any effort. Are they right or wrong? They're wrong. In a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. Virtually all successful people have had these qualities. Teaching a growth mindset creates motivation and productivity in the worlds of business, education and sports. It also enhances relationships. So what is the Bronx Learner? We want to develop that growth mindset. We want to develop the skills and qualities to ensure success at GCSE, A-level, degree, in employment and in life. So what would the ultimate Brunt's learner look like? We've talked to you about the skills and qualities that you feel are important to develop that growth mindset and to become successful. There are five strands to the Brunt's learner. Problem solvers, resilient learners, independent learners, collaborative learners, and reflective learners. These are the five steps to success. This is a Brunt's learner poster. You're gonna see these going up in every classroom with a high five categories on there. Each category has got four statements and teachers will be sharing these with you during individual lessons or series of lessons as to how they relate to your learning and development. Here you can see an independent learner. This learner can independently develop their own skills, knowledge and understanding. They can also identify questions to answer and problems to resolve. They plan and carry out research, appreciating the consequences of decisions. They can analyse and evaluate information, judging its relevance and value. Now, you are already naturally developing these skills and qualities in lessons. The Brunt's Learner is all about making you more aware of them, allowing you to reflect on them and developing them even further. So to summarise, how the Brunt's Learner will affect your learning. As I've said, teachers will be making you more aware of the skills and qualities that you'll be developing in lessons or a series of lessons. You'll get time to reflect on how you've developed them. There'll be lots of opportunities for projects in Key Stage 3. Tutor time activities would include activities all about the Brunt's Learner and how to develop those skills. And don't forget, Keep an eye out for the classroom posters and screens around the school for more information. In this film, we're going to look at independent learning, what it is, how to do it and why it's important. So first of all, what does independent learning mean for a university student? Independent learning makes a huge part of the uh, university student experience. It's not time tabled in, so you have to organise it yourself, but it's just you going out and doing extra research outside of your lectures, outside of your seminars, to try and understand more about the subjects that you're studying. All students have a lot more time that's not timetabled, that isn't structured in that way. And that's not time off. And in some respects, the time that you're not in lectures or labs or in the studio is the most important time because that's where you're really making it count. You are taking charge of the way in which you learn and to some extent what you learn. Why is independent learning important? To expand your knowledge, you've come to university to kind of be an expert in certain areas and the best way to do that is they tell you certain bits of information, you go out and you find out more, you read journals, you read your textbooks, you just get better understanding of what they're talking about and you get better discussions in your seminars if you do that extra reading. 
independent learning is an important skill, not just for students, but for work and for life. So um, if I hadn't developed my ability to do independent learning, I couldn't do the job I do now. It's absolutely fundamental. Because it can help change your perception. If you're thought one way and then someone throws out another idea, it can completely change your viewpoint on a subject and make you want to do more reading about what they've obviously been reading. <laughs> What sort of things does independent learning involve doing? Whatever way best suits you. I mean, some people go to the library by themselves, print off journals and stuff. You can get a group study room out and get a group of you in there talking about the subject. You know, some of you can read some journals, some read another, and then talk about the key points. It doesn't mean being by yourself. You're finding out other people's viewpoints as well and, you know, getting their understanding so that you've got a better understanding of the subject. You've got to think about your subject when you're outside of the classroom, live it, be it. And the best advice I would say is find a group of like-minded people on your course, persuade them to create some sort of study group where you just talk about stuff over coffee. When you do come to those bits of the course where you're struggling a bit, they'll help you, they'll be a lifeline and they'll support you and they're really, they can be, well, friends for life, basically. Independent learning is at the heart of the university experience. If you get it right, it can be really rewarding.